five months, five whole months since the last video, almost a year and a half since I began this. Anyway, I don't really have an excuse for making this a 10 part series. Well, actually I do. I'm just going to explain it at the end. When I opened up Roblox Studio, for some reason, I wanted to make a guy that seemed like he just survived out the apocalypse. Since technically the story is like the world any any is like the world any like the world ending anyway. I didn't make the person in the end, obviously. But during this, I also made this backpack, which I ended up using in the final model of the game anyway. Then afterwards, I ended up making this quick truck. Well, actually, it wasn't that quick. It took me almost a week to make this one truck. Anyway, as you could probably tell, for this video, I'll be cutting a lot of footage. Since I thought it was a good idea to start from scratch again. But anyway. I finally started to work on the AI for the game. This AI would be able to spot the player if they were in front of him, not behind him like most other Roblox games do. This is the first version I made of him. Let's call him, um, let's call him Billy. Next, I wanted to make it so that doors and other interactables within the game weren't so painful to make because previously I had multiple scripts for each door and it would cause a lot of lag in the game. So instead, I made a system where all the doors within a folder would act all the same running from one script. And it proved to be very useful, because not only does it actually work, you can customize the doors and it would still act the same way. Later on, I ended up making some sort of dialogue system. This was pretty fun to make actually, since it was one of the first times that I ever used a module script. Then, I ended up working on a bit of the building part of the game. Now, I'm not that good of a modeler, so I ended up looking at nature within a game called Hunting Season. I mainly took reference of how they model their trees, and I totally did not exactly copy their trees. And then right before, I made some quick adjustments to the running script. Now, for the AI pathfinding, I ended up using two tutorials to help me along the way, where one of them was that sort of field of view and then the other one was a little bit of an AI that I talked about previously in the game, but didn't make. And I will say, trying to figure out how to use a field of view sort of thing in an AI pathfinding script was painful. But later, I found a script that was wanting to do the exact same thing I was. So I used that, soon making it so that if it spotted me at all, and I was close enough, it would start to chase me. Later on, I started working on the dialogue system. I wanted to make it similar to how The Walking Dead made it, so I pretty much stole this sort of scene by making your non-existent wife pretend that she was forced into a sort of military camp because the world's ending. This would make the main objective that you had to go find your life, like in Resident Evil 7. But then, it would introduce an option where your friends also need help, making a game where you have to choose who to save leaving to die, like in The Walking Dead games. And now was the time to start some major building, again. I ended up looking at some random places for house models on Google Maps, so I could pretty much just remake the house and then model the inside to my liking. But before that, within Blender, I ended up making this giant Blender file where it was just some simple house props. This took a while, but in the end, wasn't actually that worth it, unfortunately, since I used almost none of them. I ended up making some small props with some labels on them, and they were pretty cool. Until I got this. Well, okay, well, it says directing users off platform. Maybe that means I shouldn't go tell people to sub to my YouTube channel, even though you should, and maybe join the Discord while you're at it. Okay, maybe it's because the labels? Maybe it's because of the labels. They look very similar to companies in real life. So I'll just change them real quick. It doesn't give me more detail within their message, so I'll just have to change it up to make it look different. Okay, this is getting out of hand. So I ended up having to dig through their terms of service, and it says in their policy, you can't have QR codes on props. What? I made them up. The lines don't even line up. Also, why am I getting singled out? After I ended up doing some more research on if other people did this, and they did in a game called Those Who Remain uses props that have labels on them. If that's not enough, even Roblox themselves have QR codes that actually work on their items. 
Because of this, I ended up having to switch to an alt account for almost two weeks to test things on there. And it could have been solved if Roblox actually told me what the problem was. But anyway, while I was testing on some things on the alt account, I ended up finding this system that was made by someone, I forget their name, where it tries to make your game have the most realism. I mean, it's called realism. Now, the reason I was happy to find this is because not only was it useful, but one of the games I'm basing the game off of, the Ray Can Be Mastered, ended up using the exact same system. So obviously I had to use the system because it was good and free. Maybe a bug or two, but can you really complain? It's both for R6 and R15, so I don't have to edit or make a change to the script in either way. Finally, after the painful week and a half long wait of my total ban time, I was able to get back to my account. I decided to move the place one final time, and then I copied all the stuff from the previous game into the new one. And then I decided to change the plot, where instead of you having a choice, you don't. And you'll be in a car accident where you fell from the highway above. It would take place in a farm. The person who seemingly went crazy will be chasing around you, aka Billy. I first started out by making the barn in the inside of it. I'm not going to talk much about the barn since it's really only for looks. Also, I changed it in the end where you can't go inside the barn, but we'll just ignore that. And then to go along with the car model, in Blender I quickly made some sort of small trailer holding thing. I forgot the name of it, but you get the idea but I finally made the first version of Billy being able to move towards a player if they're within the line of sight. This is Billy 2.0. Now to make Billy a bit more interesting, I decided to use some of the Outlast soundtracks for not only being chased, but also for when you get spotted by Billy. Afterwards, I ended up building an entire intro sequence for when the player first originally loads in. By the way, this isn't actually in the game. It's something that was but it was scrapped. Anyway, I started to build out the tutorial within the game. Things you have to get through to teach the player how to play. I used the door to signal how to open and interact. I used the vent to tell the player that you can crouch. And I also made a final prompt near the end where it teaches the player how to sprint. During this time, I also ended up switching the game from R6 to R15. If you were in the Discord, you wouldn't know that. You could join in the description. Because of this, I had to change almost all of the movement. I had to change the running, the crouching, and redo all the animations within them. It sucked, so I painfully got through all the animation and started to work on an objective system. This objective system would make an objective show up every time that you press U on your keyboard. Every time you touch a specific part or interact with something, it changes the current objective. Also. When the objective would change, it would say that, well, it changed, insisting the player to press U to see the new objective. I didn't record it, but there will also be a big orange light that will guide the player to the objective point slash part. Now, there is one thing within horror games that everybody hates. It's trying to search in an area, especially if it's a large map, trying to look for something with no indication what you're trying to look for while still having to avoid an AI. And I specifically wanted to not let that happen. When the game first released, it had that problem. You would know of the game release if you drive and join the Discord. Originally, I made it so that the player had a map to know where they are, but not only was the map terrible, it looked like a shoe. I, I can't be the only one that sees this, right? And then right afterwards, I recorded the chase scene for Billy and all the jump scares noises for Billy, which are just from Outlast. And then I took a break for making the game for a little bit. When I got back into Roblox Studio, I wanted to make a game feel a bit more immersed. Since right now, it doesn't really feel that scary. What's the best way to fix this? Add a ton of effects on the player's screen. Think Billy is scary here? Well, what about now? Well, it actually doesn't change much, but it's the idea that matters. Also, Billy is looking kinda bland. 
I ended up taking reference to the farmers that were in Outlast 2 with the dirty overalls, the hats, and the machetes, which is what Billy will be attacking us with. And now for the final Billy you've been waiting for, Billy 3.0. And as a little quick addition, I made the camera slightly shake when you run and walk. Wow, it seems like I'm on just a big streak with getting this project done. I don't think anything can go wrong. So, um, while I was making the game, I got so invested. I skipped on making devlogs. And finishing the game was my number one priority. Since I wasn't focused on making any devlogs for them, I barely recorded any of the major parts of me making the game. But I still want to explain what I did, so I'll try my best of how to explain it. As you can tell, I added a ton of stuff to the map, mainly things that the player can hide behind, like hay bales, tables, benches, things like that. And I also made the farm actually have something to harvest, which is corn. A lot of corn. And of course, Billy had one final upgrade of his animations and pathfinding. Now I won't entirely explain what happens in the game since you have to experience it for yourself. If you want to play the game, you could go down in the description where it says Project Alone. I can already hear it has, well, what happened to Don't Breathe. Well, Project Alone was actually going to originally be Don't Breathe, but I decided to change it. But why? Well, just to put it frankly, this game is not what I want Don't Breathe to be like. Don't Breathe is supposed to be longer than just 15 minutes. Also, Project Alone is not for mobile or console. It's only for PC. It's not optimized. If I'm being completely honest, the beginning is kind of boring. So what do I do now? Well, since I'm now just finishing making up the game, but since I am just now learning module scripts, not only is my scripting time way faster, but I'm actually starting to make the actual don't breathe. I've actually started around three days ago and I've already gotten a large chunk of it done. So let's hope that the next upcoming game I'm making is definitely better than Project Alone. And that's it. I wish I could have done more with Project Alone and also explain more of what's happening while making it, but I forgot to record. But anyway, hey, remember to check out the links below for the Discord in Project Alone and make sure you subscribe down there. Anyway, buh bye bye.